Hi, I'm Femi OK and you're in the stream today. Detained without charge or trial. We look at the controversial Public Safety Act in Indian administered Kashmir. Our digital producer Malika Bilal is here looking out for your live feedback. Malika, let me take you back five days Please do. to our open editorial mm -hmm. on India. Mm -hmm. So we asked all of our online community to be part of that, right. to suggest ideas mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. I did a Google Hangout mm -hmm. where we, people were watching, people were pitching ideas as well. Right. And we promised five days later that we would do a show on Wednesday and Thursday from those ideas. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> we got so many great ideas that it was difficult narrow, narrowing them down. Right. But today's pitch is one from who, someone who was in the Hangout with you, yes. activist Shayla Shora, and she explains why today's topic is so important. Have a listen. What I'll really focus on is the Public Safety Act, uh, or the so-called Public Safety Act. Under this act, minors have been arrested, minors have been detained very often, and they are they are put in jails with hardened criminals, people who are murderers and drug peddlers. And when they come out of jail, even if they're not hardened criminals, it, you can be pretty sure that it won't be the same child who comes out of that jail. And thanks to Shayla for that pitch. But of course, we couldn't do the show without you at home. So send us your questions and your comments using hashtag AJStream. Now, do we really have to remind you that this is a show that's driven by you? You're going to have to ask Shayla about that. And we want to hear your suggestions for future episodes. So share your very best ideas at facebook.com slash AJStream. And one day, your story pitch could be this very show. I'm Michelle Weldon. I'm an author, a journalist, a leader with the Op-Ed Project, Professor Emerita at Northwestern University, and I'm in the stream. In Indian administered Kashmir, maintaining security has long been a flashpoint for tensions between citizens and police. One slice of that debate has been over the Public Safety Act, or PSA. That's a law that allows police in the region to detain and question suspects for up to two years without charge, a lawyer or a trial. It's a tough policy response to the area's security challenges and human rights groups want it repealed. They allege that many Public Safety Act detentions are arbitrary and that the law is misused to detain juveniles. So are detention practices under the Public Safety Act keeping Kashmiris safe? We want to talk about this via Google+. Plus. We have Bashrat Ali, he's Secretary General of the Jammu and Kashmir Youth Parliament. Also in Google+, Plus, we have Christine Mehta of Amnesty International in India. She researches detentions under the PSA. And on Skype, Shakil Bakshi of the Islamic Students League. He has been detained several times under the PSA. Let's start with Basharat. I want everybody in our guest lineup to give me a little sense of what it's like to live in disputed territory. What's it like every day, Basharat? You start. Paint that picture for us. Well, to live in Kashmir is not that easy as it is to live in any other part of the uh, part of the world. I remember a wonderful quote by one of the professors who said, "If you are in Palestine, Palestine, it's very hard." To survive but if you are in Kashmir it's easy to get killed so you can yourself understand how hard it is to live in Kashmir because you are easily you can easily get killed at any moment of time so let me just bring in Christine here from Amnesty International you're working in for Amnesty International in India anywhere that Amnesty International goes you kind of get a feeling that all is not well with the world give us a sense of what it's like in Indian administered Kashmir on a day-to-day -day basis Christine so I'm actually based in Bangalore, uh, but I make extensive field trips to Kashmir. I was actually just there for about five weeks on a field visit. Um, so just, just as a sense, uh, I can't obviously comment on it uh, in as great of detail as Basharat, but just as a small anecdote, when we were there, uh, the first week that we were there, uh, there was a, a shooting in Shopian uh, in which four civilians were killed uh, by the security forces. Uh, and then there were 22 days in which uh, some of the southern districts in Kashmir were shut uh, under curfew, a state administered curfew. So you can see that even today, and even though uh, Amnesty has monitored the region since the early 1990s, uh, there is still these, this level of difficulty in going about your day-to-day -day life in Kashmir. 
Sure, Malika? Well, we, we posed that same question to our online community, mm -hmm. of which we're getting lots of tweets from Kashmiris themselves, explaining what life is like. This one on Twitter says, ethnic apartheid, I, he terms it. It's a major Kashmir concern. Everyday life, like the weather, is unpredictable. Another person says, Kashmir is a police state. Here, people are killed for demanding their civic rights, let alone, uh, he says, ascension, I, I believe he means secession, from India. And another person, say it says, in Kashmir, Carrying an identity card is a must. You can't even step out of your house without that. So Shaquille, for our international audience, for those of us who haven't visited Kashmir and don't know much about it, can you explain why Kashmiris have to c carry identity cards, as this person on Twitter says? Yeah, of course. Uh, the European Union rightly said about the Kashmir, they, it's a beautiful jail. Now you can understand the beautiful jail with the lawless law and you can understand the people suffering there. A man can be arrested and he can be booked under this very lawless law and rather exiled to the 300 kilometers away. So no access to his parent, no, to, to his uh, lawyer, no access to the parents, uh, uh, family rather. And uh, he can be booked there for the time the, uh, at the wishes of the uh, administration, you know, executive detention. It is not the judiciary that is uh, confined, that is detained any person. It is an executive. It is an, the government is ex uh, executive detention, rather. So all this is that to keep their, uh, you know, eye on the people uh, such a, in a colonized Kashmir so that they can uh, rule the uh, rule this Kashmir without any op opponent voice. So, Boshana, let's use you as a case study. Have you fallen foul of the Public Safety Act, and what happened? Tell us the most recent time. Uh, if you, if you, if we go uh, date back to the history of this, firstly, I'll go into the history of this. It will be amusing, amusing to you to uh, hear that the Safety Act in 1986 started as a deterrent to uh, the timber smuggling. And today, in 2013, the same Safety Act is used against young boys demanding their just demand demanding justice. This Safety Act is being used to detain those who are protesting against the rape, against the killings, against the torture. This Safety Act is being used against innocent young boys coming out of schools, come up, coming out of college. It is. It is. It's been. It's been. Uh, the state government has been misleading the national and the international media on the fact that the, that we they are not booking young boys who are under the age of 18 but there are reports with the amnesty international and with the local media as well that boys as young as 12 years have been kept behind bars for more than two years and once the court uh, bails them out is the same state police who rearrests them books them ag again and puts them behind the bars with the criminals who are murderers rapists and the, the, I, have, I have been I have been in touch with one of such victims who was first detained wrongfully under the um, under the Public Safety Act, kept behind the bars for two years. And then the court uh, re released him on on bail. Then he was rearrested. He was put behind the bars, and then the court again released him. And now, as on today, he's being tortured by the same police to spy on other fellows, on his friends, so that he could he could give them the information about other fellows in this in his vicinity and neighborhood about their activities. Okay, Bashar, take a take a pause for a moment because we spoke earlier to Ali Mohammed Saga. He's the rural development minister for Jammu and Kashmir. And he says, overall, the law is good. He's talking about PSA. If misused, it's a problem. But in 2012, we made eight amendments in different sections because we took into account civil society. We decreased punishment from two years to three months. Christine, I wonder if that's got anything to do with Amnesty International putting pressure on uh, the administrators in Indian administered Kashmir, Kashmir about this PSA. So it certainly does. We were actually not allowed into the Jammu and Kashmir region before 2010. In 2010, we sent a delegation uh, to look at the Public Safety Act and, and see how it was used uh, in the region. So we actually conducted multiple visits and looked at 600 different detention orders to see exactly how it was being used. And based on that, we released a report in 2011 called The Lawless Law, which we also released an updated briefing in 2012 called Still a Lawless Law. Uh, post that, we ran a campaign which called for multiple of the amendments uh, in conjunction with civil society that were, that were enacted. And so there were multiple amendments, including not allowing minors, uh, individuals under the age of 18, 
to be detained under the Public Safety Act, to reducing the term of imprisonment uh, from you know a certain set of years to down to two years and uh, six months in some cases. So that was a that was a, a great achievement uh, for civil society in Jammu and Kashmir. However, we still feel that the Public Safety Act is being abused despite these amendments, and that. Uh, the only way to stop this level of abuse is to ensure that it is repealed and that PSA like provisions are repealed uh, as well. One thing, I would like to, one thing I would like to add here is that even if there have been amendments in 2008 or 2010, but the fact is, are those amendments being executed on ground? They are arresting young boys and girls, uh, young, sorry, not girls, young boys, and telling their parents that no, this place police station has not arrested them or that police station has not arrested mm -hmm. them. So there is this, the, 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 they're instilling a kind of a fear psychosis wherein parents, particularly this has been a trend and it has been found out that they are picking up particularly to a young boy from the weakest sections of the society and they are they're, 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 uh, straining their parents as, as, as long as they, they are, they're trying to tire them, they're trying to uh, they're trying to take away from that uh, the, the, that very feeling for which they are out on the streets. Shaquille? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 I may tell you that uh, this uh, even girls have been arrested under PSA. It is not unique. And one more thing I may tell you that the amendment uh, about the amnesty Indian chapter was telling uh, in, two in 2012 January, uh, the, it was rather ordinance. It was not passed uh, in, in an assembly and it was an ordinance. And in 2012, uh, the governor uh, who is the uh, member from the New Delhi? Is the agent of the New Delhi? He sent it back. It is not. It is the RNS is not law yet. So th yeah. there is no. You know what? What kind of what kind of uh, their development? They says amnesty. Look, I may tell you. They had uh, the first the the uh, advisory board who was who who who, who looks the all the cases here. He was their existing chief justice. Now. This is a retired a retired judge who has been there for last, you know, uh, 30 years. Uh, he, he, he got three extensions. He is 80 years old and he, he, he is still there. there. There is no change in it. It, it. it is the same judge who is handling, you know, the Gandharbal uh, fake encounter. He is handling him the, about which Amnesty tell the recently Shupian case. So okay. so on ground rather, on ground rather, there is no change. You have been, you, I, I, I already told you, it is not only the book with the PSA under PSA, Public Safety Act. They have been exiled. They they took, they, they took the boys some 300, 200 kilometers away from their home. Exactly. This is an exile rather. All right, so let me bring in the community. I, I have some follow-up things because I'm a little confused right now, but community, you go first. Well, the frustration that you just heard in, in Shaquille's voice is, is something that I'm, I'm, I'm seeing echoed online. There's a tweet here from Ukab who says, Public Safety Act is a misnomer. It should be called the Public Suffocation Act. Others mm. describe what it's done to them in their lives. Uh, Shell says, since 2010, particularly minors are being detained under irrelevant grounds and are kept with hardcore criminals in jails. On Facebook, Mohammed says, How how is the detention of young boys a threat to the so-called maintained security idea justifiable with huge Indian military presence in the Kashmir region? We're in constant fear of losing our lives. So Shaquille, I, I want to throw that back to you because of course you were detained under the PSA. What were you told um, of, of why you were detained and, and, and how did you get out of that? Yeah, look, I have been detained. Right? The, the PSA was passed. It was earlier. It was um, it was MISA and it, it was DIR, Defense Indian Rules Act. Then it was changed into PSA, Public Safety Act. It is right from the 47. It's not 78. So, oh, okay. Now I have been arrested in 1984. Uh, uh, not other than those people who said Desh Farooq Abdullah regime, you know, when I was booked there, I haven't seen even in, uh, you know, a, 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 a warrant copy. Even I was not produced before any court of law. Uh, I was a small guy, I was kept uh, in, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in the hardened criminals, though I wasn't, uh, I was reading at that moment uh, as a student. But, you know, nobody came to me. Uh, where you have, what, what are the reasons that we have booked you under this public safety act? It was there at that moment, the police and the executive, they, at their will, they booked anybody they like in the name of security of state in the name of public order. Okay. And it is continuously till recently 2010. And at, in, that, in that moment, 
I have been booked and even ever I haven't seen any judge any you know advisory board so called advisory board and any other thing nobody is there to hear us so this is the whole and problem you have what, you have this one, one thing one thing one, one, one thing I would like to one, one, one thing I would like to one at a time everybody one at a time so uh one thing one, one thing I would like to add ahead. and I would I would like I would like to, uh, Christine particularly to listen to this that PSA or no PSA upspa or no upspa that does not change the ground realities in Kashmir you have to understand and accept the fact that kashmir is a military occupation india has militarily occupied it there are 7 lakh indian troopers who are there pointing their muzzle at every single kashmiri who are who are given the free uh, free license if I, uh, if i if i say so by the laws like armed forces special powers act to 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 arrest anyone to kill anyone without being without being booked without being questioned there is no accountability the umar abdullah government has completely handed over his administration to the local police they are running it they are doing everything they can but there is but wh- why why there is such a mayhem on the streets is that there is a historical problem that not only the indian state but the international community has also avoided to interfere in avoided to engage in from united nations to other countries right till to the uh, to, till the, the bottom of it that's the india they have all ignored okay. the historical context of the problem all right so christine help me get some clarity here mm. i heard uh, bashrat talking about mayhem on the streets i'm hearing about young kids young boys occasionally young girls being picked up people being picked up for no reason that they understand and being kept in prison without a trial so this sounds like it's a hot mess basically but is there a legitimate reason behind it what's actually happening in this part of kashmir that makes the authorities feel that this is a way to control the security situation can you just make that very clear for us watching around the world so okay so, so to break that down first of all uh the public safety act is uh, a law that allows for what we call administrative detention which is used in other systems around the world as well it does in all instances violate international law so when you talk about detaining somebody without charges uh without allowing them for a trial that always violates international law and in fact it violates the indian constitution as well so uh, there are two profiles that we've documented of people being detained under the public safety act um uh, political dissidents uh mostly out throughout the 90s and the early 2000s and then post 2008 we started to see many more minors start to be detained under the PSA because it, when we're talking about this contextual shift uh the the, the 90s and the early 2000s are are when the insurgency and the militancy which is where the Indian state uh gets a lot of their legitimacy as far as talking about the need for national security the need to protect civilians etc cetera, etc cetera. uh they're talking mostly in the context of what they term as an insurgency or a militancy and what uh Kashmiris on the ground term uh, a, a, a freedom struggle. Okay, and so, so Kashmiris on the ground. We have always called a, it is a yeah. political is a situation of political turbulence. Sure. So uh, and, and a legitimate struggle for uh, um, for freedom and and for uh, the right to a plebiscite is, right. is what the local activist uh, view is. Okay, thank you for that. The right, right, right to plebiscite. Uh, let me add one point here that the question of plebiscites, the plebiscite has long vanished from uh, from the streets of Kashmir. There is one voice that and that, that single voice goes uh, that is for freedom. What we call in vernacular as azadi. And it's that same call, for, fr- that, it's that call that. for freedom that I'm hearing um, or seeing rather online. I, I'd like to play a video comment from uh, one of our Kashmiri community members and like all of you to have a listen. Public Safety Act uh, was introduced by JNK government in 1978 to counter timber smuggling but uh, recently it has been misused by JNK government to introduce fear among Kashmiris and uh, repress them under arbitrary detention for 2 years actually without any trial it has led to separation of loud ones because they are uh, sent to jail and breadwinners are there in jail so it has been very problematic for the families who have been living without their loud ones So Bashar Ati mentioned as you did earlier the original intent behind the PSA but he also mentions the effect on families. On the other hand, we have a tweet like this from Clyde who says, "I agree with Indian control. Law and order must be ensured. Justice and law is important. Illegal detention though has to end." So the government B- B- Bashar Ati says that uh, the PSA has led to increased security. What are your thoughts on that? Do you disagree? And 
If I so, do how do does I, how I do administrators <laughs> go about increasing security in the I, region? I completely, I completely reject that disposition that it has led to our security. There is no security on ground. There is, there is no security. Who, who is your, our security? The JNK police who has killed 120 young boys in one year? Is that the security? And what type, type of a security are you talking about? With what security has the state provided us when, when the same state is killing us? The same state, state is not allowing us our right to self, our right to self-determination first, our ri right to express our uh, right, our right to expression, our right to speech. Even today, the very river day in Islam, on the day of Eid, the, the political, uh, the, uh, the, the separatist political leaders were not allowed to come out of their homes and offer Eid congressional prayers. Isn't that, isn't that against, uh, against the, uh, again, the violation of international laws? So there is no security. What what security has it provided? There, there is no there is no external threat to us. The threat is internal, and that is a historical problem. There, they would provide a security against inter external threats, but when the threat is internal, when the threat is homegrown, there is no question of security. Let me just bring back in the Minister Sagar. He wasn't available to be with us at this moment, but he spoke to us early on today, and he says, "I know there is a demand to repeal the law." But to run the law and order situation, we have to put in place such laws. No doubt that PSA is a problem, but we are not violating human rights here. Christine, what? can you respond to uh, that? I would, I would, yeah, so I, I've talked to many government officials and many uh, individuals from the police department, and that is a very common line that is used. And, you know, Amnesty does recognize in situations that there is a need to maintain law and order, uh, police and security forces have a right to defend themselves. However, when we talk about the use of laws like the Public Safety Act, systems of administrative detention, other special laws that are enacted in Jammu and Kashmir, the, the number of violations and abuses underneath these laws vast outweigh any kind of benefits or, or national security benefits that they, that they would bring. Uh, for example, I spoke to a senior government official in the last time that I was there, and he said something I thought that that was that was very uh, poignant. He said that um, essentially he believes that human rights groups are trying to ensure that innocents do not get pulled into a conflict or, or a struggle. And I said that all of these laws, like the Public Safety Act, are actually pulling in more innocents than they are capturing the people that are actually causing the problem. So, Christine, if this if this act went away tomorrow, what difference would it make? Um, so, actually, this is something that I was saying in the pre-interview as well, and something that goes back to what Bashar was saying as well, is that if you repeal any law, if you repeal the Public Safety Act, it won't necessarily make an immediate difference on the ground because the way that the provisions are used are not are not only enshrined as far as in text in the law but in the practice of the way that the police put them put them into use. Right. So if you're talking, so what we've actually done is we've seen a shift since 2010 uh, from practices under the Public Safety Act shift to ordinary criminal law. Okay, One of so our Christine, original calls, literally we're in the last minute mm. of the show. What difference would it make if this went away tomorrow? What difference would it make? I think it would make it more difficult for the police to simply pick people off the streets uh, without having to collect any kind of evidence at all. At least under criminal law, they have to uh, frame charges and bring them before a judicial body, which they do not have to do under the Public Safety Act at this time. All right, we're going to come back to all of our guests. I know you all have more to say. We're only just scratching the surface here. Let me show you why. I just have here on our website um, at aljazeera.com, there's a whole section on Kashmir, the forgotten conflict. If it's wetted your appetite, like it's worth me in mine, this is a great place to go. And then just look at the geographic issue right here. We have Pakistan, we have India here, Indian administered Kashmir, Pakistan administered Kashmir here. Just geographically, you can see on the map the issues that are being dealt with or maybe not being dealt with. We'll be talking more about Kashmir in the post show at stream.aldazir.com. I hope to see you there. Let me tell you what we're doing on the next AJ stream. How did Unix in India, I did say Unix, go from being revered to living on the fringes of society? We we'll speak to transgender activists about their plight. It's going to be an intriguing show. Stay with us. The post show is next, though, at stream.outofzero.com. We'll see you online. Thanks for watching.
Hello again, this is the Streams Online Post Show. We've been discussing detention practices under the Public Safety Act in Indian administered Kashmir. So let's get right back to the conversation via the community. Malika? Well, you asked a provocative question. When, what if it all went away? What if the PSA was repealed? Uh, we had sort of an answer um, from our community. Uh, right. Have a listen to this video. Okay. The green reality is that no amount of discussion in the media and campaigns is going to make the Jammu and Kashmir government suddenly withdraw PSA. It's a fact that it's going to stay. So we need to think in terms of what needs to be done to reduce its abuse. So Basharat, in that video comment from Nilan, he says, it's a fact the PSA is not going away. What we need to do is, is think about what can be done to reduce its abuse. There's also a tweet here from Neslihan who asks generally the same question. In a disputed land such as Kashmir, she says, how do you make sure PSA doesn't infringe on individuals' rights to personal freedom? Do you have an answer to that, Basharat? Yeah, uh, let me tell you that when, uh, uh, when, when, when in 1989 uh, people in Jammu and Kashmir picked up arms, they were not against the PSA. When in 2008 young boys came out in the streets with the stones in their hand, they were not against PSA. Even if today or tomorrow they go out on the street, they are not against PSA. PSA, no PSA. Upspa, no upspa. Doesn't really make any difference and that is not what the people out on the streets are fighting for. The issue is that if, if, if the government is saying that they are going to repeal the act, they are, that is in itself an admission that it is draconian, it's undemocratic, and how Amnesty has described it is as a lawless. But that is not the reality on the streets of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The reality is, is this, the narrative is this, the aspirations, the political aspirations of the people is this, that they want freedom from the military occupation of the Indian state. So if tomorrow, if tomorrow the law were to go, if, the, if tomorrow the law were to be stripped off the constitution, that would not make any difference. That would not make even a single point one percent of the difference because the alien, because, because, the, the, because the, uh, the feeling, for, uh, the, the yearning for the freedom will still be there. That's in us, that will continue to be with us till the dawn of the freedom. Shaquille, what's your take? Yeah, of course, it is the same Sina who landed the, the army in uh, to, uh, 27th October 1947, uh, illegal occupation, they occupied our land, you know, uh, uh, there are many other, as I wrote, there were MISA was there, DIR was there, the enemy agent is there, and which agent act is there. The, the, pro the problem itself is that, as Bashar has rightly said, yes, he, he, he represents the aspiration of, of the whole um, the Kashmiri, Jammu and Kashmir people. The, the problem is that you, we, 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 it is a system, it is an occupation there. It is, an, it is the day, the, the occupation day that the state that uh, landed their Indian army in Kashmir and the, all, it, it, it brought with them the all laws. Uh, it is not the, uh, the it is a, it is the interest of the India. Not the interest of the common people, Kashmiri people. Kashmiri people want freedom from the illegal occupation, and the laws do come and do. Come. It is it is hardly matters for the Kashmiri people. Uh, there and one more thing, uh, it is the law that came uh, after seventy five uh, so called agreements. So called, you know, they, they said we 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 solved the problem. Uh, when this the solution of the problem is like PSA what about the other solutions if uh, if there will be a compromise there will be a talks and there will be other things so the the only thing the only thing will be that when the 27th October that the black day for Kashmir will end it and the people who are the LL4 army came to Kashmir landed here okay. they should vacate and the, the state should be as it was in 14th August 1947 only then we don't need any suggestion, any good laws or bad laws from aliens. We want to have a state at the same as it was in 14 uh, August uh, 1947. Okay, we know okay. I'm just going to call time on this. Take a breath, everybody. I, I wondered how long it would take us to get to this point. It took us the main show into the into the post show to get mm -hmm. to this point because mm -hmm. this really is the PSA, the right. Public Safety Act, is a symptom of mm -hmm. a bigger problem, which right. I alluded to at the end of the of the main show. Right. Mm -hmm. Malika, where do you want to take? That's us exactly next? what our community yeah. is saying. Mm -hmm. Samreen says Kashmir's major problem isn't PSA but illegal occupation. She says. 
Another person, Green Bird on Twitter, says bad laws are the worst sort of tyranny. So, Christine, I want to throw this to you. Would repealing the PSA do anything um, to take care of some of the bigger issues of, of what our community is talking about, or is that beside the point? Uh, so I should clarify that Amnesty International doesn't actually work on self-determination. So we remain a neutral. We we maintain a neutral stance when it comes to issue uh, questions of occupation. So I, I leave that to the Kashmiri people. Um, however, when we talk, but we do want to ensure that within a certain context, whether it's conflict, non-conflict, uh, you know, regular society, um, you know, society that is struggling for freedom, that human rights are not violated. So when we talk about bad laws, yes, we will work. Uh, to ensure that bad laws are repealed and that uh, good laws are implemented in the future uh, by the by whatever powers and um, and targets that we that we need to um, target in order to do that. Yeah. But shall whatever I the political setup be. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I I knew I slightly stopped you to get the community back in. I stopped your flow. Go ahead. No, I was just saying that uh, Amnesty International uh, it's, uh, has always been welcomed by the people of the Jammu and Kashmir. And I know before 2010, they were not welcomed by the state. But the fact is, they won't, as, as you rightly said, they won't be involved in the question of the occupation with the, uh, with the pe people of the Jammu and Kashmir said. But it would be an, uh, I, I would urge uh, Christine, on behalf of the youth in Jammu and Kashmir, to, mo to do mo more such surveys. Like uh, there is no PSA, there is APSPA. There are there are issues like the government is saying they are using non-lethal weapons to deal with the protesters. But go out and conduct a survey that how are, are they are the weapons really non-lethal? Look at conduct a survey how many young boys have lost their vision. Right. Conduct a survey for how many guys have uh, how many guys have lost their legs, how many guys have lost their uh, arms and all that. Uh, in 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 the in the protest and the and the question should be asked: Why on earth would somebody come on the street with a stone on hand to, to, to just receive a bullet? Sure. What what really has what what real what really has uh, pushed him to 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 to, 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 to in a sense face 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 bullets? It is it is the state-sponsored repression. It the, the problem is more institutionalized. It's more structural. That, that that is to be addressed first. The structural problem of the Kashmir issue has to be addressed, and until and unless it's not addressed, people will come out on streets. They will end up picking up stones only, and not never the guns again. They will pick up stones only because that has been that is because right. when you see your brother being beaten up mercilessly, you move around, you see around. The only thing you spot is a stone, and that is what you aim at the state. Let me just remind our audience who may have been joining us from. 30 minutes ago that the reason we're doing this story is because Shella Shora suggested it to us in an open editorial and she was really concerned about the young boys being detained by the Public Safety Act. I'm going to leave you with a personal story. This story is about Faizan Rafiq Hakim and I'm looking at his picture right now. It's a little still from a video report that you did, Christine. Tell us about Faizan's story and how he made it into an amnesty report. So back in 2011, we had just started working on the Public Safety Act, uh, doing some of our initial surveys. And this particular case came to our attention because he was only 14, according to his family. So they, they reached out to us and we actually had a delegation sent down there uh, to verify his age. And it, his school records did say that he was a little bit less than, than 15 years old, most likely. Um, so what had happened is that he was picked up allegedly for stone pelting, uh, which is a common thing for young boys uh, in Kashmir. And uh, he was taken over to a jail in Jammu, which is over 300 kilometers away from Srinagar. So, and he was kept there for more than 40 days. Um, I went and interviewed his family and it was very difficult for them to even get over to speak to him. It was difficult for them to access a lawyer. Um, and he was kept alongside what he said were 40-year-olds, criminals, much like Shayla said. Um, and this is a trend that we've seen. It, he, he's very emblematic of several of the, the stories that we've seen subsequently, and even this year, as recently as March. Sure. So the you know, Public Safety Act is being used uh, more prevalently on minors, All right. and, uh, like and, I said, since 2008. And Christine, I mean, the, the bit that jumped out of the report for me when I was looking at Faizan was that he said he cried the whole time he was in prison. The idea of this 14-year-old miles away from home crying. And I know all of our guests said, 
uh, our Kashmiri guest said it would make no difference if the Public Safety Act was done away with. But sometimes we have to remember little boys like Faizan and maybe it might at least mm. help little kids like him. Um, right, I and I to, would agree with that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's This is such a huge subject mm -hmm. and we got into it in a, a little slice of it. Right. Um, Malika, where does our online community kind of wrap up this Well, you, you mentioned the open editorial and Shayla yeah. who pitched the idea. Lots of people were also tweeting in about it. One mm -hmm. of those tweeters, I'd like, like to play his video comment as the last word. Have a listen to this. Asif, um, and I just wanted to say, it's absolutely disgusting to see what's happening in Kashmir. Uh, people are being locked up, uh, even they're, they're not sparing children um, for um, what they're doing. It's just absolutely disgusting and shocking um, what's been happening to these kids. They're being locked up uh, with no access to their legal uh, lawyers. Um, it's about time that the world community takes lead and, and asks India to uh, do something about it. So we asked the world community and India to finally do something about this. So this conversation will continue online. It's one of our hot topics as far as AJ Stream is concerned. So at AJ Stream, tweet us as the conversation continues. But I do have time to thank our guests. We have Christine Mehta, Basharat Ali, and also Shaquille Bakshi. Thank you very much for helping us explain this part of the Kashmir story. So on the next show, how do eunuchs in India go from being revered to living on the fringes of society? I did say eunuch. I know I have your attention now, right? We'll speak to transgender activists about their plight, but not today. That's for another show. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you online at stream.aljazeera.com. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.